Hello, everyone. I'm Toya Northington. I'm the Community Engagement Strategist at the Speed Art Museum. Welcome to our first information session in partnership with Art Fields. We welcome our colleagues today uh, for a special presentation. Um, we're always wanting to support um, artists in our region. Um, and Art Fields is one of those rare opportunities where you can um, showcase your work, but also develop your talent in a new way, in an innovative way, in a new space. And we're gonna hear from Cal Coleman about the work that he's doing and we welcome him and his colleagues. Um, I'll let Cal introduce himself shortly. Um, Chantel Stubbs is our community outreach coordinator. You'll hear from her later. Uh, we are a small and mighty team, but she will tell you a little bit more about our Community Connections Residency um, that is coming up later. Um, the cool thing about it is uh, once you know one grant cycle or one grant application, once you've mastered one, you can translate that to any application. So we're partnering here so you can get that information and then you can take that on to new opportunities as they develop. Um, feel free to reach out to both organizations. Um, we can put our email addresses at the bottom later on today. If you have questions, reach back out. More than likely, if you're reaching out to the speed, you're gonna hear from Chantel. But if you have specific <laughs> questions about the program, um, she'll loop me in. Don't worry, we'll get you taken care of. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Cal. Okay, uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Kyle Coleman. I'm the Fine Arts Manager um, at Art Fields, and I will introduce my colleague, Carla Angus. Um, she is the Education and Programs Court um, Consultant. Got to get it right, Carl, <laughs> for Art Fields. Um, and as I said, our veteran who has been around since day one. Um, and a little later, we're going to hear from um, Jeremiah Andrew Jaja, who was a participating artist in Art Fields in 21. Thank you so much, Cal. Yes. Hey, I'm Carla, and I'm so honored to be here with you guys. I wish we could be in person. I'm going to share the screen now, uh, which includes a short PowerPoint that we have compiled for today's presentation. It's got so much up there at the top of the screen. There we go. All righty. So a unique celebration of art. We're here to discuss art fields that we're so excited about that takes place here in Lake City, South Carolina. And what we're hoping that you take away from this presentation is first of all, where is Lake City, South Carolina? <laughs> what is art fields? And we're gonna also share about art being a change agent, which many of you who are artists already know the power of art. What is the submission process for art fields? Why we feel like you should apply and why you should consider coming to art fields. So with that being done, Kyle and I are gonna kind of team this together this evening. So Kyle is gonna start off by telling and answering the question. Well, first, let me ask this. With those of you who are on this call right now at this moment, how many of you have been to Lake City? I have. Jaja has, yeah, see? <laughs> and how many of you are familiar with art fields? Uh, I am too. Okay, perfect. So Chantel is looking like, no, I don't know exactly. I know a little bit. <laughs> so for those who are watching after this on the recording, if you have not, you'll know now. So Kyle, tell them a little bit about Lake City, South Carolina. All right, Lake City, South Carolina. We are a small rural town. We are in Florence County, South Carolina. Uh, to give you a sense of the geography. We are um, a little bit over an hour away from Myrtle Beach. Um, we are about a half hour from Florence, which is the county seat, um, an hour and a half from Columbia, and a little bit over an hour from Charleston. So we're kind of sort of in the middle, um, but a little bit off of the 95 corridor. Um, we are like similar towns um, that were definitely based in uh, agriculture for our economy. Um, when those opportunities and those jobs went away, so did the lifeblood of the town. Um, and Art Fields is uh, deliberately planted in Lake City um, to help change that economic engine um, from agriculture to arts and culture. Um, we are, um, I think, officially an underserved community. We've got uh, medium household income is just over 30,000 and about 32% uh, of um, Lake City's residents are below the poverty line, just to kind of give you a complete picture of who we are. Um, so our full government name. So the Lake City 
Creative Alliance is a 501c3 organization. Um, we are configured under the Dollar Moore Foundation, which is also a 501c not-for-profit. Um, and our full government is the Lake City Art Fields Collective. Um, our primary um, duty year round is uh, preparing for art fields, which is a nine day competition and celebration um, that takes place every April. Um, art Fields Junior is our companion um, art competition for um, students that are 18 years old or younger. Um, we have three contemporary art galleries, um, the newest of which Crossroads is actually dedicated to Art Fields winners. Um, we have a public art programming and year-round educational programming. All right, so as we began, um, we started uh, 10 years ago. So we're coming up on our 10th anniversary for Art Fields. We're all celebrating. Um, we draw entries from 12 Southeastern states. I can do this off the top of my head now. Alabama, Arkansas, oh, thank you, Carla. Florida, <laughs> Georgia, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Carolina, of course, Tennessee, Virginia, and West Virginia. <clears throat> we, um, uh, are during art fields, we have about 40 odd or more uh, venues who uh, partake in it. Um, as I mentioned, Art Fields Junior runs concurrently with Art Fields, the bigger um, event. Uh, we have all kinds of learning experiences. Um, we say networking, but that really understates it. Um, art Fields has become uh, almost like a homecoming every year where our artists, our patrons, our community look forward to coming back. And we have developed over the last 10 years an extended art fields family now. Um, same thing with those partnerships, um, the prizes, and I'll talk about that a little later. And of course, the fun. Um, there is no experience that can replicate uh, what it means to actually come to art fields. Um, and I'm sure Jeremy will talk about that as well. <laughs> As Carl has said, um, Cal has said, I'm giving you a new name, Cal, uh, <laughs> about <laughs> with art being, we know the power of art because it has impacted our small town in such a big way. So just looking at a definition of art, it says something that is created with imagination and skill that is beautiful or that expresses important ideas or feelings. Works created by artists, paintings, sculptures, et cetera, that are created to be beautiful or to express important ideas or feelings. And those ideas and feelings, we see how that has impacted our town because imagine a small Lake City, South Carolina, and we tell our town that we're bringing artwork downtown. So when he says 40 plus venues, he's gonna tell you more about those venues, but those venues can consist of barber shops. They can consist of stores but we literally turn our downtown into a gallery. It has had a great cultural impact throughout our small town. It has bridged a lot of um, communities together because of conversations that have been forced to be had. Let's just say art doesn't always beat around the bush, right? So with that being said, it has forced and has caused a lot of communications. It has stimulated our businesses. Art Fields has impacted us because with the stimulation of our businesses, Art Fields is bigger than Christmas for our small town businesses. It has totally increased our tourism. We have more people now knowing what Lake City is, coming through Lake City and stopping instead of passing through on their way to the beach. Uh, so we're excited that people are now stopping. And what I, with my background in education, I can tell you what I really have loved is seeing how it has inspired our youth for them to look within themselves and see that they are artists and they will say Miss Carla I'm an artist and I said yes you are so we're so excited about how it's impacting our young people so the power of art fields we feel like the reason why it has worked so well is because we have pride ourselves in trying to maintain a, a devoted and diverse um, team team members we've had a plan going into this we feel like it's very important to communication like the very important that we communicate. So we love the fact of having platforms like this so we can get the information out. But also we have a very open door where artists are comfortable calling and asking questions and sending us emails. And a lot of times we shoot it right there to our man, Cal, and he makes sure that our artists get the information that they need. And for those artists that may can't even get through to Cal, there's so many members on the, well, there's enough members on the team that can answer those phone calls and help our artists. Relationships we feel are huge because those relationships help us connect with more artists and build relationships with artists. Community engagement, we have had 
our police department, our fire department, the school system, everyone has joined together to make this happen. Our population is around 6,000. So it's a small town. So when we tapped in, everyone was willing to tap in with us and they've bought into the process and they have taken ownership. We have volunteers that volunteer every year. We have close to 150 volunteers that follow through. We have, have over 200 that actually sign up. And then we have a close to 150 that follow through with showing up and being there for you guys who come to Art Fields. And what's so great is many of them will take a week off from work because they say it's time for Art Fields. And so when Art Fields is over, it's almost like we go through this small depression. <laughs> it's, like, it's like having Christmas and then cleaning up after Christmas or some big holiday. The partnerships have worked to serve very well because with working with artists, we wanna make sure that we can connect artists to other artists and create opportunities out there for artists. And so we are very excited about the partnerships that we are continuing to build on. We're very thankful for this opportunity tonight with you guys. Because once again, the more we build partnerships, the more we get the word out, and the more can we communicate and grow our um, art event, which would then increase sustainability. As Kyle said, we focus on the nine days, but we are really beginning and pushing towards a year-round art experience in Lake City. So when you come to Lake City those nine days and come back, you can still feel and hear the power of art. So... For what many of you are on this webinar for or in this workshop tonight is to understand it and to also to know if you're interested, how do you apply? How do you be a part of it? So we wanna tell you about the competition process and the steps that it is to take to be a part of it. All right, so um, every year our cycle begins with our call to submissions. Uh, we are well over halfway through now, um, they opened on um, September 1st, and they will close um, at midnight on November 1st. That is a Monday. Um, I have to underline to all artists who are interested um, that the way our system works at um, 1159, the system will completely shut down and you will not be able <laughs> to complete your submission. So please don't wait until the first. Uh, we have, I think, a little bit over two weeks um, left for submissions. Um, all submissions are done electronically um, through our website, uh, artfieldssc.org. Uh, you want to try to click on that, Carla, and we'll see if we can give them a, a visual. Let's see. There we go. All right, that uh, nice pink button there. Submissions for 2022. Um, you click on that, that will take you to our prizes and rules page. And right there under the first, the easy uh, three-step process, you hit that orange button that says submit artwork. It will take you to um, the login for our platform. It's called Art Booth. Um, if you created a login, you just log in there. If you've not, it will walk you through um, creating your own password. You'll put in all your information for your artwork and for yourself. Um, and then you will hit submit and then you'll be on your way. All right, thank you, Carl. See, that worked nicely. We, we, it never works as, as well in practice as it does <laughs> when we actually have to do it. Um, so from there, um, we um, search um, for art professionals um, throughout the year. And we have two separate panels um, that really make art fields possible. Um, that first panel of five is our selection panel. Um, we are very, very happy to uh, mention that we have a former selection panelist on the call, Ms. Toya, which we were very, very glad to have her. Um, that selection panel will go through every entry um, that is eligible for art fields. Um, they um, apply their uh, professional opinion um, and help us score. And then we average those scores to make the selection on which artwork will actually come to Lake City. Um, we have over a thousand entries every year, um, and there are up to 400 pieces that will actually make um, the journey to Lake City. Uh, the next part of the process, the venue selection, um, as Carla mentioned, uh, Lake City becomes a citywide uh, gallery full of non-traditional spaces. Um, you have restaurants, you have barbershops, um, you have sports therapy um, centers that all um, host the artwork and they become the living, breathing gallery. 
Um, I won't be on my soapbox long, but I have to mention uh, one of the things that is unique about Art Fields is that it really is a partnership with our community in Lake City and the venues themselves, once the selections are made, they come in, they look at all of the artwork that has been selected for the following art fields and they select the, the work and the artists that they want to display in their space. Um, the power there that I think is lost is that these are um, everyday business people who see things in your artwork that, you know what, I see something that I want this person to be represented in my space. So I'll step off my soapbox now. <laughs> um, yeah, after <laughs> definitely have to chime in and say, yeah, that is a great part of the process. And a lot mm -hmm. of our business owners, if they could have 20 pieces of artwork in their businesses, they would. They would. So mm -hmm. it is definitely, it provides ownership and buy-in. And it's also not always reflective of just because art piece is there or here or wherever it is it's because half the time they can't get them all in their businesses. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Yep. Every year we have to disappoint a few. It's like, well, no, I'm sorry, ma'am, but we just can't fit 50 pieces into your one little shop. <laughs> um, once the selections are made, um, we will um, announce to the public uh, those um, accepted artworks. And then the artwork is delivered to Lake City. We'll be reaching out um, to all the artists to get uh, specifics on uh, the delivery process. Um, artists may either send um, via FedEx, UPS, um, they may hand deliver um, their artwork, but with the exception of um, installation pieces or really involved pieces that the artist uh, physically has to install themselves, um, our art fields team actually does all of the art handling and installation. Um, the exhibition is um, from April 22nd through April 30th uh, next year, 2022. And then our second uh, group of uh, art professionals come into Lake City. Our jury panel visits every artwork that is accepted in um, art fields um, in the venue where they're being displayed. And then um, by that Friday or Saturday, we uh, literally lock them in a room and let them arm wrestle to determine the grand prize and the second place prize. Um, also going on at the same time, anyone who visits art fields can cast their vote uh, for their favorite pieces. Um, it's, uh, we have two People's Choice Awards, one for 2D artwork and one for 3D artwork. Um, the only caveat to that is that um, visitors have to register their device to vote while they are in Lake City. Otherwise, it's American Idol, and I think that's copywritten. So to the good part, um, that Saturday evening, um, our finale is um, the close of the celebration, but also the announcing of the awards. Um, the top four prizes are the grand prize, which is $50,000. Uh, the second place prize is $25,000. And both the 2D and the 3D People's Choice Awards are $12,500 each. Um, from there, we go to our Sunday um, where we start our deinstallation process. And like Carla mentioned, we, we have to have a moment because the party has ended for another year. <laughs> All right, so before we jump into the why do we submit to art fields, I think this is the perfect segue. So um, Jeribai Andrew Jaja um, is a participant in Art Fields 2021. Um, he made the trip to Lake City, um, participated in the portrait contest. So I would really like to give him a few minutes just to kind of talk about his experience and he can talk directly to artists on why they should submit to art fields. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Cobb. Um, I first heard about Artsfield in 2020, um, when it was, which was canceled due to the pandemic. So um, I kind of was accepted uh, for that one. So I was very much looking forward to it um, till you know, it was canceled. And, you know, it was quite sad, but um, I was so happy to also, you know, to be accepted for the 2021 um, show. And I take art so passionately. So um, I was like, 
I felt very recognized and empowered to the fact that um, it was like they were placing the spotlight on like Southeastern artists. So it already made us feel like, okay, just someone that's just wanting to recognize just a specific, uh, you know, group. So I felt very good about that one. And I wouldn't felt much more recognized when, and with the fact that it was thousands of artists that apply and just a specific few, you know. Um, so I made it a point that I would be there to actually experience it in person to, cause I just like to really get the whole experience. So I came and I was there, I think for eight days. And one of the things is um, arts field. So it's funny because arts field, when I had arts field, I was thinking it's just maybe like a gallery, like a building, but I knew I, I actually found out it was like a like it's the city right so when I saw arts and fields I didn't really think so but when I now came I kind of understood I don't know if they named it because of art the art there but I kind of really saw why it's arts field because they incorporate every little business to showcase the art so you're going around looking at these art pieces but you're also connecting with the beautiful people and you're very very receptive so um, you're also patronizing artists and the city, as, you know, so it was very inclusive of everybody. So I just felt included, like I was serving the community in some way. I was adding to the community, not just with my art, but with looking at other, you know, seeing what the city has to offer. So I'm offering to the city with my art and the city is also offering me back. And I felt that was very, just like you said, I felt a community, even if, I'm not from there. I felt like part of a community, and um, it made it made the galleries just feel make made you part of it, you know. Because, um, like I said, I was there. Um, I made it a point of contact to speak to as much as as much people that came by my stuff, and I really saw the hospitality, which made me have a a gallery experience too. You know, um, it made me feel like. It made me get get some um some experience and some knowledge on how to speak to people because of that setting, and not just speak to people, get to know them because I was not just speaking about my art. I was also knowing them, and they um it was such an experience that they kind of told the, told me that we let other people know so they can come by and like they'll invite your families to come see. So, art field makes you feel very included and the support is much more than an individual they they kind of go back and invite other people to come see you as the artist because we the artists that seem like the middle they make us feel like we are the stars of the event so we feel we feel very good about it you know and like i said if even if you're not there you know you might hear something about some feedback about your art which still makes you feel feel part of it even if you're not present so um, that was one of the very great part of arts field. They make you feel the city and they kind of, I wouldn't say force you, is encourage them, kind of encourage you to just have a great feel of the city downtown. So that was very good. And they had lots of um, other activities that just didn't make you feel like you just look at art all day. You know, they were like, um, like the portrait context, you had karaoke, outdoor music, so that it just makes you feel home away from home aside just looking at art you know sometimes and uh, i was also um oh, privileged to be part of the um portrait contest which kind of just um exposed me to another kind of experience as a whole you know i had never been in such an experience before but i made it i made sure i joined it just to really you know absorb the learning process, and um, you know, is I think it was like sixteen all together. We we stayed in one room and we were drawing and different levels, and it just made me kind of <laughs> it was it was a nervous situation, but um, <laughs> you just feel good seeing other great artists, you know, create in front of you, and you're experiencing like a live curatorial experience where they like um jury your work and I was the kind of person that I didn't just um I wanted to ask more questions and hey how do you see my work like I, I got good feedbacks on what I could do better so it was a learning experience too as an artist I wasn't just going to you know um just show my work I was trying to get some professional feedback and it was a great learning process so as an artist 
It was a great learning process, a great experience on, you know, being a, an artist and kind of getting into the minds of curators, which is very helpful in your art career. And it was, it made me have a one-on-one -on -one experience with people that are interested, art collectors, and it just made me have that overall experience as an artist to be able to speak and tell my story. Because sometimes art is about connecting with the other person and sometimes you can, you have to do it, you know, verbally. So it, it made me, it gave me that, um, that um, opportunity to really do that. And like I said, the people will be very, very receptive and very supportive. I, even, um, I was privileged to have my, my article written in one of the local newspapers, which kind of gave me more, um, you know, more reception in the city. So uh, I really enjoyed the experience, it made me really feel included. And I believe every other artist that came there felt the same way. Wow. So, Jeremiah, so understand that Carla and I are going to recruit you for every time that we do this from now on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that, honestly. You're Thank very you. welcome. Thank you. You're very welcome. So he made it very easy for us. <laughs> <laughs> the networking, he talked about it. Your artwork can be for sales and many of the artwork is sold. Um, we don't release the artwork until after the winners are announced. Um, Kyle has told you about the prizes and as with those prizes we have the jury and we have those people's choice and I'll tell you those people who come to vote they're serious about it uh, and the thing about voting is they can vote as many times as they want to but they can only vote for one piece one time so even if you invite all your friends the good thing about it is they can still vote for several other pieces of artwork if they choose and the experience is unreal and we thank you so much because uh, for everybody who's listening and partaking in this we did not like talk to him before this, it was like, okay, just come on and talk about it. So I'm so happy that your experience was so good and it was great meeting you um, during Art Field. So you gotta come back, okay? So oh, yeah, he said, he's already said everything I wanted to say. So I'm just gonna say this really quick. Once again, you get to see artwork from 12 Southeast states. Um, you get to, we tell people to come cause you can vote and change an artist's life. The shopping is great, food, the music, the fun, the networking the art sales. And I want to go back to networking real quick because it's almost like an artist family reunion almost at this point with volunteers and stuff. Cause we had close to 300 volunteer um, artists that were here last year. And on our roster, we had about 250 that signed in. Like we had over 200 plus artists, Kyle, am I correct? With the artists mm -hmm. that actually we did. came to Lake City. And a lot of those artists were in the competition, but we didn't have another handful of artists that just came back, whether they made it into because. the or not because they've now grown these relationships and as um you heard him talk about each artist has this lanyard that has a picture of their artwork and their names on it so they are like celebrities you are a celebrity tomorrow, okay <laughs> you guys are celebrities every day for everything you go through and all we put up with and you striving for your career but we make sure doing art fields and i'm gonna tell you if you want to walk down the street and not be bothered you have to take that lanyard and put it in <laughs> They constantly stop and want to talk to you. So with that being said, it's just a, a real cool thing to watch the artists interact. And I would honestly say going back 10 years ago, that was a piece that I did not take into consideration that was going to happen. That was just a wonderful, positive result that has occurred over these 10 years of going into our 10th year of doing this. Uh, Art-based events, as he's shared, there's music, there's dance, there's fun. So you can come and get the culture. You can also listen to the music. And there's just a lot of opportunities for artists to get involved and just to see and experience the power of artwork. So we've tried to express the, the importance we feel to partake in this and, and submit, consider submitting artwork. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> with everything that's being said, I'm going to pull up a video real quick. Um, sometime it works in the slideshow and sometime it does not. So I want to pull it up really quick if I can get it to work. And what I wanna share, hold on, let's see here. All right, what I wanna share here is a video so you guys can let me know whether you can see this or not. You can give me a thumbs up once I start it. 
All right, can you guys see that screen there? All right, perfect. So we've talked a lot about it, but we also wanna share a short video. And once this video has concluded, we will share a short quote and then we'll just answer questions and we will be done with our presentation. So <laughs> let me get this thing up and going. You gotta All share right. your chat uh, too. Yeah, I know, I, I see that. Okay, here we go now. <laughs> Art feels is life. Art feels to me is happy. It's rewarding. It's fantastic. Uh, really exciting opportunity. It's the single coolest event I've ever seen in the South. Art feels is pretty dope. <laughs> I've been overwhelmed by the impressive quality of the artwork here. This is not New York City, it's not LA, but the fact that this is going down here with such a high caliber of artwork. We've been walking around, looking at all the art around here. Everything's so pretty and it's scattered around everywhere. So we've just been able to see the boutiques and restaurants. I mean, that they can just walk into the coffee shop and bam, there it is. As I'm walking around the street, everybody's got a smile on their face. Everyone's happy to just be out and about. They're happy to, to be celebrating art, celebrating Lake City itself. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Art Field. The past year has been, I think, a roller coaster, no matter who you are in this country. Um, and I think the people who are processing it in ways that we're going to look to to kind of understand it ourselves are the artists who are making the work about the experiences that we've been dealing with. And we're seeing not just how people were affected by the pandemic of the last year, but we're also seeing resilience and we're seeing community and we're seeing all of these great conversations that are coming together in this space right now. And it's very powerful to see them all communally. And so I think art is also the highest form of expression uh, for me to be able to express myself in this capacity for a community to be able to enjoy a mural like this uh, it means a lot to me. The artwork here is very memorable. It spells 2020 without saying anything. I'm here at Art Fields 2021. And as people walk by, they can stop and let me draw them on the window of the storefront. Essentially what we end up with is not just individual portraits, but at the end, we end up with really a portrait of a community. In this case, Lake City and the participants and attendees of Art Fields. Art Fields presents just an exciting opportunity to grow and push myself and, and see what I can do. I definitely 100% recommend take your shot at coming to Art Field. It's a beautiful experience. It is absolutely taking your art career to the next level. And I think it's very, very inspiring and motivational. You know, Art Fields just seems to keep growing and really enriching Lake City. You know, it's a, an energy that's focused around the arts, which is really a special thing for artists and people with an appreciation for the arts. I mean, what more could you ask for? All right, so that is just a little... Y'all have to laugh. Y'all know how technology works. <laughs> Make sure I have turned this website page off. All right. <laughs> I know you enjoy that, Kyle. I did. I, I saw him on there, the movie star. I saw him on that clip just now also. Um, let's see if we can get back to the slasher. Okay. So I hope that um, what we couldn't ex express in words that you could see through the video, a lot of what we've been expressing about art field. So we had, we do have a quote. Kyle is going to share that, and then we're going to open the door for questions. Kyle. Okay. Um, 
Putting art at the heart of a community enhances our lives by stirring hard to articulate feelings and inspiring us to look beyond what we believe to be possible and imagine a more vibrant, exciting future. It also reminds us that we're all creative beings and that whether we're making art or music, telling stories, or cathartically sharing in the experience, we're all connected. We are all connected, no matter where we are. Um, and I think that is something that we oftentimes forget. I think it's kind of cool to come together and experience something of this magnitude together as one. So with that being said, we do want to open, a question, open the door for a few questions, and then we'll come back and tell you what the FAQs are. So with you guys being on this call, um, I think <laughs> artists that uh, will watch this at a later time. Uh, Kyle, I'm sure you can talk to Toya and Chantel, but we can kind of monitor that, uh, that responses that take place. So if you mm -hmm. were watching this and was not able to partake in this live session, just know that you can ask questions there, but we will also put our contact up at the end where you can reach us directly. So with that being said, uh, Toya, Chantel, Jaja, anything that is on your heart and mind that you may have in regards to what we've presented? have a question could you talk about or tell me about if you have never exhibited before I've never been in an exhibit before I've never been in a show like this and mm -hmm. I want to apply and you know I have a camera I've got a camera on my phone but what should the work look like when I photograph it like do you have any tips for how I should do that sort of show well got you um it might be a little counter to uh to what your intuition is, but the best way to photograph uh, artwork is to have it the way that it will be displayed. So like our tendency, especially let's take like a two dimensional painting would be to put it on a flat surface and kind of mon hover over it to take a picture of it. But it actually is uh, better for your work to have it hosted on a wall to be presented in the way that it would be um, exhibited and take a picture that way. And I will also just on the back end of that say, even with that method, whatever method you feel like as an artist, is that going to display it the best when mm -hmm. art every panel views it? That's what you want to do. Right. Um, whenever you submit, one thing we remind artists time and time again, when you re read the rules, you can only submit one piece of artwork. Mm -hmm. But when you submit, you can submit five, five images, images. Of the same piece of artwork. So if it's a 2D, a lot of times you just need one good shot. But if you want to go in close to kind of get a, you know, closer to something within the image that you feel like you really want the judges to see, or you mm -hmm. want to show off a part of the image, I would encourage you to do that. Um, with, with 3D, you want to take good pictures all around just because remember, it's going to a review panel and each one of them are rating it based on what they can see and mm -hmm. what the artist's statement is. So to make the competition fair, they don't know where you're coming from. They don't know your background, your biography. They're looking at the quality of artwork that you present to them. So I would say whether you're a beginning artist, um, an artist that has been doing this for years, mm -hmm. you display and show. So I would say share, share it with your artist friends and ask them, you know, is this coming across good? How does this look to you? And let them give you an opinion also. And that goes back to what Kyle said, please artists, when you submit, don't wait to the day of right. at 11.45 to submit your artwork uh, because we stay by the phone line all night long. But if we're talking to you at 11.50, 11.55, we have no control over when the system shuts, shuts off. And that's just to make it fair. So if you submit tomorrow and then you decide, oh, I don't like my image, I want to change it, you can call Kyle and we can change it and get it switched before the deadline but it's very mm -hmm. challenging once that deadline hits to make it fair, it's pretty much closed. So Toya, I hope that answered your question in the sense of whatever level artist that you are, you just want it to come across to a review panel that they can look at it and see what you want presented to them. Sure. As far as installation and never installing, we have a team of, um, of in, they install your artwork for you. Uh, if you're an installation artist, and Kyle will definitely tell more about this, but this mm -hmm. artist, we encourage them to install their own artwork so it can come across the way that they want it to come across to the judges and they can schedule in for that. As far as hanging and things like that, the hanging team will take care of your artwork. So you don't have to have that pressure toy of coming to Lake City and right. getting it up. Mm -hmm. Thank you, that's helpful. 
Any other questions? Chantel? Yeah, so a question I have is if, you know, I'm sitting through this, this is my first time hearing about arts field and the video has captivated me. Um, before I even go to the website, um, the image of your artwork that you submit, is that um, gonna be the same artwork that's presented or are we creating different artwork at Arts Field? Excellent question, yes. Um, so um, I think we mentioned, so each artist is only allowed to um, enter one artwork uh, for Art Fields. So the image that you submit has to be the exact same. If that artwork is accepted, that is the artwork that has to actually come to Lake City. Yes. And that's a very good question because we have artists that will submit, make it mm -hmm. in, sell their artwork, and then call and say, oh, I sold my artwork. Can I submit another piece of artwork? To be fair, whatever the jury panel selects, that is what comes to Lake City. Right. Absolutely. Got another question about yes. the application. Mm -hmm. um, could you talk a little bit about the description or are there things that people do or that I might do that are common, like no-nos or common things that could, you know, make my application not so great, but um, could you give me some tips on how to, how to avoid those things so I can make it better? Absolutely. Um, the best thing to do um, is to thoroughly read uh, the rules of art fields. Um, there's actually, you'll, you'll find when you go to enter, there are, I think, five at this point, uh, check boxes um, that you have to check off to say that you did read the rules, but it highlights kind of the five top things that we see year in, year out. But um, you should also read um, the um, expanded rules of the competition so that you know exactly uh, what it is that you're applying for and what our expectations are. Um, in terms of the entry itself, um, like Carla said, um, each artist can only submit one artwork. Um, and that is primarily to avoid um, an artist submitting a portfolio um, of several unrelated works that they just happen to have created. Um, and we consider those portfolios and portfolios are ineligible for art fields. It has to be one single point, uh, one single uh, artwork. So um, if artists were to submit um, on their entry a uh, photograph of say five different works, they would be disqualified. So that's probably one of the biggest no-nos and we do see that year after year. Yeah, I would say definitely also there are size limits. Mm -hmm. um, they're not major, but we have to have something to control this, <laughs> to control all of this. So it's important to check to make sure y'all work fits in those dimensions, but if not, and you submit in advance, and you make a phone call to Kyle, the team can review your request of if that artwork is a few you know, feet longer, inches longer, whatever the case may be, as long as it's approved prior to submissions ending. Right. So once again, that's another advantage of submitting in advance. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, go ahead, Carl. <laughs> no, I was gonna say also, for those who is the first time, if you go to our website, we have a, a great page of FAQs of things that artists have asked over the years and we kind of compiled questions that are uh, similar from year to year. So you can visit this page and kind of look at the different questions that the artists have asked. And it may be some of those questions may fall on that page also. So I did want to share that with you guys at that resource is there. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Kat. Oh, no, you're fine. I, I was just going to um, share also. So for Two-dimensional artwork, uh, the, the dimension limit is 12 feet. And for three-dimensional art and um, installations, it's 15 feet. So anything below that is acceptable. And like Carla mentioned, if you have artwork that needs to exceed that, um, we just uh, appreciate just a, a request um, so that we can review it. Um, and that, um, like Carla said, it's more about the size um, so that we can make sure that we can accommodate the artwork. Uh, I do have a question. Yes. So um, since you've already spoken about um, how um, artists 
just have one picture, one drawing, or sorry, one entry, and to avoid an artist trying to submit a portfolio of unrelated works. How about if he has, the artist has related works, like a body of work where one doesn't stand alone. So just like a, an installation, but a 2D installation. I don't know if that makes sense. Excellent question. Thank you. I, I was going to bring that up. <laughs> so um, diptychs, uh, triptychs, artwork that is uh, that has multiple components is considered one entry. As long as they are thematically connected and as you said, they can't stand, like you can't take um, one component out and it stand on its own, but they all are considered one piece, that is perfectly acceptable. That Those are not considered portfolios and you can't enter them. And every year we have artwork that is submitted that is uh, that consists of multiple components. So, um... So they might consist of multiple components. That doesn't mean they uh, visually link. Like maybe if you have two two drawings, maybe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the head is on this part and the hand is on this part. That's not what I'm talking about. They might visually look totally different, mm -hmm. but the um, the meaning of the art comes into play when all of them are together. Together. Mm -hmm. So does that also um, one piece? Yeah. Yes, absolutely, yeah. and. Um, in uh, each entry, um, there is a section called the uh, artist statement, and that is specifically for the artist to talk about the work. So if it is something where it's not readily um, apparent that they are cohesive pieces, that's yes. where the artist can basically make a detailed description about their artwork so that we know this actually is one piece, even though it has varying components. Right. Right. And with that being said, if you're an artist that is wanting to sell that piece to an art fields, you have to sell it as one one price. Right. So you break it down. And, you know, even though it collectively goes together, you then can't price it differently for the exactly. competition. Right. Now, once the competition has concluded and it's over and you have someone asking you about your artwork and you decide to make that personal decision to split it up at the art fields, that is you as an artist. But as how we are putting it on our web page and how it's being projected is one piece of artwork. Mm -hmm. awesome. All right. Is there a question that you think an artist may have who's not on the <laughs> or, <yeah. laughs> um, Any more questions? So I've got one. More one. Question. Okay. okay. So you go ahead, Jerry. Right. Some <laughs> artists might not uh, know, but um, is the arts field, the whole thing is, is an artist required to be there? Uh, the artists are not required to be in Lake City, but we, as strongly as we can, <laughs> suggest that you come for the experience itself. Um, but no, uh, uh, we mentioned that uh, you don't even have to physically be present to deliver your artwork. Um, artists who end up sending it by a service, we also ask that they have um, basically the return postage and the return um, um, the return trip for the artwork already scheduled as well. So no, an artist does not have to physically come to Lake City, although you absolutely should. <laughs> um, one thing I was going to mention, because I, I don't think this came up, I mentioned uh, that our Crossroads Gallery um, consist of uh, former and current Art Fields winners. So those top four prizes that I mentioned, um, they are indeed purchase prizes. Um, so that in exchange for uh, the monetary award, those pieces become uh, part of Art Fields permanent collection. Um, Carla mentioned earlier, so the artists have the ability to Put their artwork up to sale um, for the public or not they can choose for it not to be sold um, but that does not apply to those top four winning uh, artworks yeah another question yes um, um, i think i'm forgetting the question Okay, no. So the question is, um, since it's a contest, so um, artists are coming with a mindset of, oh, I'm competing with other artists. So um, is there like some form of rubric 
to make the artist think about, okay, this is how I would maybe present my work or myself to maybe get more points perhaps since the contest. Excellent question. So um, each artist can um, beforehand prepare um, in effect uh, gallery cards um, that have um, an image of their artwork, um, the venue um, and the address where that art, <clears throat> excuse me, where that artwork is being shown. And we will provide each artist with a voter ID number for the People's Choice Award um, so that they can include that on the card as well. <clears throat> and uh, the artist venues um, will display all of those cards, those information cards for each of the artists that they have in their venue. Um, the only caveat to that is um, we, we don't allow artists to um, do unw unwanted solicitation while in Lake City. So it's perfectly acceptable to hand um, just a person on the street, they see your tag, to hand them a card that gives them information um, about where your artwork is and a little bit about it. Um, it's not okay to stand outside on the street in front of the venue and say, hey, everybody, come in and vote for me. I think, I think yes, and that stands a lot for our public um, votes. I think, if not, if you were asking about a rubric, maybe that the jury panel may have, is that where you were? Yes. Oh, okay. As far as the jury panel goes, we have professional um, art and art professionals that come in and jury, and they base it on their experiences being artists and technique and style and artist statement. So the review panel has a rating system that they use. They rate it independently. And then the ones that rate into art fields make it to art fields. And then the ones that come to Lake City, every jury panel has to go and view that artwork and rate it. So as far as a strict rubric that we use, that is used for Art Fields Junior, which is the 18 and under competition. We do provide our rubric for those young kids. For you professional artists, we trust our professional judges to come in and give their professional opinion about the art, the art that is there. And they collaborate as a unit to decide on those winning pieces. So unfortunately, no, it doesn't have like this one, two, three, four, five type of thing. Um, right. It's more trusting them. And that's why we try our best to get uh, people on our review panel and who serve in our jury panel to, to have that experience in the art world. So we pride ourselves on pulling the correct people in that jury panel and making sure that jury panel is as diverse as it can be in different areas. So although the competent the artwork comes from the Southeast, our judges are from all over. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so I wanted to get to this information page. And so you can see there at Art Fuse this year will take place April 22nd through the 30th in Lake City, South Carolina. We have provided your general questions there for anyone who, if you do think of something, or as I said earlier, if you're not here on this uh, webinar tonight or and, and didn't get asked your question, you can email it to www.artfuse.org. There is our contact number. On Eastern time, we are nine to five. Um, we like to take calls between 10 and 5, Monday through Friday. Notice that submission deadline, November 1st. Make sure by 11.59, there's the website. We encourage you to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. It's really cool. They do a good job keeping that. It's very much up to date. Your questions are answered quick. So even if you can't remember the info and you use our social media pages, you will still get us. Tonight, you met me, Carla Angus. There's my email there. Feel free to email me if something comes up. Kyle, who is your man artist, email him the most. Um, <laughs> there's Kyle Coleman at kyleandartfieldsc.org. And then Roberta Burns is the one who helps us get the information out and get it out to the artist. So even if you leave this session and then all of a sudden realize you didn't think of something, please feel free to contact us. And thank Absolutely. you so much for allowing us to share this information and Josh I thank you so much <laughs> you're, you're cool. very welcome I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be here oh, good luck. I know you're submitting so good luck <laughs> oh thank you all right Toya Chantel what what else can we answer for uh, the people viewing this video <laughs> I think that was wonderful. I, I think some things are just gonna have to sit sink in. 
you know, and once you see the application, you'll see the examples and see the other art and then those kind of questions that come up. And it's probably specific for every person and their medium and their approach. I thought this was a wonderful overview. Thank you so much for coming. Thank, Thank y'all. Before we go, um, I do want to pass it over to Chantel Stubbs to give some information about um, what's coming next. What does um, community outreach have going on with the um, Community Connections Residency? Well, I want to say thank you, uh, Carla, Cal, Jaja, for sharing with us about art fields. Um, it just seems really exciting. Um, everything seems really exciting, and this is information that we are very excited to get out to our um, network of people um, on all of our partnership lists and things like that. Um, one of the things that stuck out to me that all of you said time and time again is community. And I think that that's something that the Speed Art Museum has a lot in common with art fields is that our community connections residency is really something that um, started last year and it is community based with our Russell neighborhood, which is one of um, the neighborhoods in West Louisville. Um, and so Russell and the rest of West Louisville, we want the resident who will have a seven month stay um, as a resident in the Community wow. Connections Residency um, to really be someone who um, has a passion for connecting and collaborating in and with community. Um, and so that was something that I was grateful to hear. This is a residency um, for somebody who can do that. So you do have to be available to be connected with those community members um, and to do collaborative work in order to apply. Um, the residency closes December, at the end of December at 11.59 as well. So you have a couple more months to um, ask and get your questions answered about um, submitting your artist statements, um, your work samples. And so for the residency, you have the opportunity to submit a proposal for uh, your overall project that you want to complete during your resident stay. Um, and you also have the opportunity to submit some previous or current work samples that you have to kind of show your medium in the work that you do. Um, and so in two weeks, uh, which um, I wish I knew off the top of my head what two weeks from now would be, I think it's the 20, let me see, 28th, yep, the 28th. Um, we will be having another informational solely about community connections. Um, and there you'll be able to ask um, your questions. Um, and since this will be streamed out again, we're going to share um, how you can apply and learn more about this residency, um, along with art fields contact information as well. So maybe you're not ready, ready for a seven month residency stay, but you want to get your feet wet and um, enter the art fields um, competition and immerse yourself there. Um, this is just a perfect example of how collaboration in the creative field works. And um, if I left anything out, Toya definitely has my back, so. Oh, that was wonderful. This was just a wonderful experience. It's always good to be around other creatives, uh, other people working in the profession. So I got a lot from it. Um, I hope you all get a lot from it. And again, feel free to reach out. We're cool people. Um, so don't be afraid um, just to ask. If it sounds silly, that's okay. Someone else has probably asked that same question. So um, look forward to um, talking with you soon in two weeks. And thank you so much for everyone coming and hope you have a great rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank y'all. Thank you very much.